Hi there, so in the last video we covered ARMA processes and we have this question in mind. So taking a look at these curves, can you tell the difference between them? So can you tell if this is an R process or an MA, pro MA process? And the answer is not that simple, but if you take a look at, at the generating process, actually the, this seems kind of depressing because the first one is an R2 process. You can see that there is some dimension matching. So if you include the order in the ARIMA same com uh, common then these two means that you have to include two coefficients. So the first one is an R2 process, the second one is an MA2 process, and the third one is an ARMA22, meaning that you have two coefficients for the autoregressive part and two coefficients for the moving average part. So this looks depressing, so is there a way in which we can solve this? And the answer is kind of yes. So remember a sample autocorrelation function, so the idea is that you take the data and then you compute this function, which is a kind of normalization of the correlation at two different points divided by the variance. And under the assumption of no correlation, this would, be, would mean that this is simply noise. And the idea is that with 99% with confidence interval, if the noise is Gaussian, it's a normal distribution, then you can tell that this probability is going to be between minus, uh, almost minus 2 the standard deviation plus 2 the standard deviation. So the idea is simple, I, if you assume that the residuals are Gaussian, then basically you can compute and you can have an idea of how large is this. In this case for pure noise, this is simply 1 divided by the square root of n. So let's forget about the theory and let's do some simulations. So let's simulate pure noise, meaning that this is a process in which we don't have any correlation of or any moving average. And I'm running this for 100, 1000 and 10,000. Okay, so this is the or correlation function. You can see that this is almost zero. You have some points that escape there, but this is related to the fact that sometimes noise is noise and sometimes you cannot control anything. But anyway, if you take the square root of 100, this is going to be 10, so 1 divided by 10 is 0 0.1. So 1.96 divided by 10 is going to be 0.2, more or less. So this dashed blue line is going to be the upper boundary of pure noise with 100 realization. And as you can see here, if you change the number of simulations, so if you go to 10,000, the square root of 10,000 is uh, 100 actually, so this is 0.02. So you can see that the scale is different, we haven't looked at the scales until now, but now you understand why we're plotting these dust lines. So these dust lines depend on the number of observations, and they are telling us that anything between them can be considered just pure noise. Okay? Of course, if you take 1000, this is going to be 1.96 divided by something like 33, and this is around 0.05. Okay? So now we have a lot of information, because now we can compare autocorrelation with these dashed blue lines so let me show you some examples. So let's uh, start with the moving average Q, and this is going to be a rule number one. So rule number one, if you're simulating an MA1 process, typically you have only one bar outside these blue lines. If you're simulating an MA2 process, then you have two lines, and so on and so forth. Okay, the sign here depends on the sign of the coefficient. So if the first coefficient is positive, then you're going to have uh, one bar positive. If it's negative, then it's going to be negative. And here again, so if the first one is positive and the second is negative, then you have some sort of alternancy between values, okay? But the interesting message uh, here is that whenever you take a look at the arrow correlation function, the number of bars outside these dashed blue lines are going to tell you how many co correlations you have in the moving average part of the model. What about the autoregressive part? So here is not so simple. So as I've discussed in a previous video, you have a kind of exponential decay. So if you have R1, then you see something like this is smoothing. If you have R2, then it's not that simple, it's not simple and exponential. If you have negative values, then you have this oscillation between up and down. But you can see the overall trend is not captured by the autocorrelation function. So basically the ACF is not very good for autoregressive processes. So what can we do here? So we can define the partial autocorrelation function. And the idea is that we are going to do a linear regression. Actually, the the whole idea behind our regressive is that you have these coefficients relating the future with the past. So if you take a simple linear regression and try to plot what is happening with the coefficients of all these numbers, then we have what is called the partial or correlation function. Okay, again, in this case, if we have pure random noise, then this is going to be uh, balanced between minus 1.96 divided by the square root of n and let's say almost 2 divided by the square root of n. So let me show you an example. So we're going to compute that using the, the, the figure GGP-ACF. 
and here we go so this is the basic acf and you can see this exponential decay but if you take this linear regression inside then you have this this lovely picture in which you have only one bar and then everything is between these dashed blue lines okay so basically this is going to be a predictor of how many weights do we have to include in the autoregressive part of the model so rule number two R Q leaves Q bars outside the blue lines. So again, R1 is going to leave one bar, R2 is going to leave two bars, R3 is going to leave three bars, and take a look at the signs. So depending on the signs, are going to be above or below, but this doesn't matter. And R4 is going to leave four bars. So now we have two tools. So we have ACF to try to see the moving average part, and PACF to try to see what happens with the autoregressive part of the model. Rule number three, and this is a kind of consistency check so everything that is inside so the residuals should be like random noise so remember that random noise is something like that so you have everything inside those blue lines even for the PACF so the partial error correlation function so this is going to be a test of how good our model is trying to model the time series so you need to practice a little bit with this in order to be familiar with these ideas but essentially here you have a kind of cheat sheet for ARMA1 so if you want to know in advance what's going to happen you can see the, the difference between having negative and positive values and how you can detect those with a partial order correlation function and the order correlation function of course this is taken from a very old book but the ideas are almost the same actually this idea this methodology is called the box jenkins methodology and was written in the 1950s and the idea is the following so first you have to plot the data identify outliers and and try to to check if you need to do some kind of box cox transformation or taking the logarithm and so on and so forth now that you have all that we, we are going to leave this for another video then you have to to select your model so in the future we're going to take differences of the data but so far with the only thing that we have to do is plot the autocorrelation function and the partial correlation function and take a look at the data and try to see how many bars do we have outside of those dashed blue lines and then we're going to do a guess so they are going to choose different models that can fit and we're going to choose the one with the lowest value of, for instance the Akaike information criterion that we discussed in the past then we're going to check the residuals for that model and if the residuals are purely uncorrelated and we can tell that we don't have any noise there then we are done and we can do some forecastings if we have uh, still some correlation so we have uh, still some bars outside the dust blue lines then we have to repeat over and over again until we are happy with the model. Here you have another cheat sheet for R1, R2, MA1, MA2, but I recommend you that you download the code from the description and play a little bit, try to generate those figures that I've used in the video and try to have a good idea of what's happening there.